Welcome to Electra Online. The next four identities are again really, really important in trigonometry, and you definitely should remember what's inside the box or memorize what's inside the box. Notice that we have what we call the sum and the difference of angles for the sine and the cosine. And for each one of those, we have an identity. So the sine of a plus b is equal to the sine of a times the cosine of b plus the cosine of a times the sine of b. Notice that the signs match when we're dealing with the sine. On the difference of the angles, the sine of a minus b, it is equal to the sine of a times the cosine of b minus the cosine of a times the sine of b. Notice how similar they look. The only difference is that we have plus signs there and negative signs there, but everything else looks exactly the same. So we should be able to memorize that fairly readily. It's a sine times the cosine plus the cosine times the sine. And notice that we have the angles a, b, a, b, a, b, a, b. So we simply switch the sines and the cosines here and here. When we're dealing with the cosines, we have the sum and the difference of two angles. But notice that the sines now are opposite. If you have a plus here, this becomes negative, and a negative here, this becomes plus. That's different from the sine. In the sines, the sines match. In the cosines, they're the opposite sines. Also notice that here we have sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Here we have the two cosines and the two sines together like this. The cosine A times the cosine B minus the sine A times the sine B, cosine A times cosine B plus sine A times sine B. The angles are still first angle, second angle, first angle, second angle, just like there. But here we have the cosines together and the sines together. Here we have alternate sine, cosine, cosine, sine. So those are the four identities, the sine of a plus b, the sine of a minus b, the cosine of a plus b, and the cosine of a minus b. And again, really good if you could memorize that. Now as an example, or a couple of examples, let's say we have the sine of 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. That adds up, of course, to 75 degrees. Well, how do we find the result of that? Well, we take the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle plus, because it's sine, the sines match, the cosine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. So the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. The cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. And the sine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. When we simplify that, we get the square root of 2 plus the square root of 6 divided by 4. And when we work that out of the calculator, you get 0.966. Now, when you take the sine of 75 degrees with the calculator, you get the exact same value, so it does appear to work. How about the cosine of the difference of two angles, 45 degrees minus 30 degrees, which is 15 degrees? Well, we get the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle, plus, because the sines are different, when we deal with the cosine, so this becomes a plus here. Then we have the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. So again, the cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. And the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Now notice when we simplify that, we get the exact same result. The square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 divided by 4, which again is about 0.966. And you wonder, well, why did we get the same result? But then we should remember that the sine of 75 degrees should be the same as the cosine of 15 degrees because the sine of theta equals the cosine of 90 minus theta. So when theta is equal to 75 degrees, then 90 minus theta is equal to 15 degrees. Or vice versa, the sine of 75, oh, no, it's the same thing, right? The sine of 75 equals the cosine of 90 minus 75. So that's why you can see that this must work. We saw that in the previous video. So again, the sum and difference of angles when it comes to the sine and the cosine, extremely important, used a lot in the sciences as well as in your mathematics classes. So definitely try to memorize what's on that table. And now you might wonder, well, how do we know that in the first place? How do we know that those identities are true? Well, we, we took some examples and it looks like it's true, but how do we prove that to be true? Well, we'll do that in the next couple of videos.